Hi everybody, I'm Mary Beth Irons. I play the violin professionally. I've been playing the violin professionally for many decades and I love it. Long ago I played with the Cleveland Ballet, the Cleveland Opera. Maybe some of you took children to see the Nutcracker or one of our wonderful operas. Uh, but now I'm pretty much a performer with the Cleveland Pops and on my own. So I love to, to do this kind of solo performance for you. Uh, and tell you a little bit about the violin as I go and the different ages of music that we'll be traveling through together. But I think the first thing I'd like to do is show you, let you hear the sound of the violin. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you're going to be hearing in the next, um, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. The violin is the closest instrument to the human voice. My violin is about 255 years old. It's a copy of something really good. It's a copy of a violin from Italy called a Dalla Costa. Now, if this was an actual Dalla Costa, it would probably be worth about a million dollars, maybe more. But since it's a copy, it's just worth a fraction of that. But I love it because it's from that era. So it's nice and old and it has a, a sound quality that appeals to me. Um, I'm gonna play a little bit more for you so that you can hear the different styles of the violin. One song that keeps going through my head lately is Don't Get Around Much Anymore. It's a popular song from, oh, maybe the 40s but it's very applicable for today's world where we're not getting around much anymore. So here's a song that fits our life today. anymore but pretty soon after all this is over we'll be putting on the Ritz which is another song that I love <laughs> which we will be doing eventually. Um, I was classically trained on the violin. So I went to Baldwin Wallace Conservatory of Music and I studied all the great masters like Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin even. I played a little bit of piano in college and I love them all. I can't, sometimes people will say, well, what's your favorite composer? I really can't pick because I just, it's like ice cream. I love all flavors. But um, the music of Bach is near and dear to me. So I'm gonna play a little bit of Bach for you. This is called Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring. <laughs>
of uh, Bach's music from the beautiful cantata. And there's so much of Bach's music I love. He wrote six Brandenburg concertos. Each one of them are stunning. Um, number three is a particular favorite. <laughs> That's a little sampler of a Brandenburg concerto. If you get a chance to listen to them, all six are wonderful. The music of Mozart is another, uh, he's another composer who's near and dear to my heart. Uh, Mozart's music, when you play it, it's kind of like walking on eggs. You have to be so delicate and so careful because it's so exact. And it's often been said there's too many notes, but that's okay, I love each and every one. So here's a little bit of the symphony number 40 in G minor. Some of you may know Ina Klein and Ock music. That's just a little bit of Mozart, a little night music, Eine kleine Nacht music. And of course, Beethoven. I've played many of the symphonies, if not all. Of course, Symphony Number no. 9 has the famous Ode to Joy melody in it. Uh, symphony Number no. 5 is probably one of the best known. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight notes that are so popular. <laughs> He also wrote a lot of music for the piano, which I've stolen. So here's a little bit of Fur Elise.
which will take me right into symphony number nine, the Ode to Joy. <laughs> string in some of those sections and that's what we call a double stop and a double stop is a very effective method of um, bringing harmony into the melody line of the violin for instance if I played O to Joy just the melody it's fine but when you add those harmonies, it just becomes a richer tapestry of sound. It's the one way we have of providing harmony. Um, the piano, for instance, is all laid out with so many notes and 88 notes and you can, uh, keys, and you can play the melody in the right hand and the harmony in the left hand. But with the violin, you just have this amount of real estate to play, and we have to play on multiple strings in order to get that harmony. And there's many combinations of those, of those um, we call them double stops. stops. Um, I'm sure you've heard the that's called banjo music but it's on the violin. Oh Susanna. fiddle for you. People ask me, what's the difference between a violin and a fiddle? Well, I think if you notice, I crossed my legs when I started to play fiddle music. So basically, the violin and the fiddle are the same exact thing. Uh, it's like calling your husband sweetie. You call your violin my fiddle. And it's a nickname. But it also is a style of music. Fiddle music is, is very different from, say, a Mendelssohn violin concerto. It's different. Uh, fiddle music is really fun, though. I love it all. There's a lot of tunes that just are very appealing. Even with the kids, the songs we learned as children, I still love them. The... As a violinist, I love to play at senior facilities, uh, nursing homes. I play at Metro Hospital, which I'm still doing even during this pandemic. I'm playing there very early in the morning as employees enter the facility and go to work. And it's really important to lighten their mood from the start. And I bring a little bit of, of music to them. I like to play for them maybe some morning songs, morning themes as in M-O-R-N-I-N-G, morning, because this is when I'm there and this is when they're coming into work. 
um, songs like, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning. The corn is as high as an elephant's broken and oh what a beautiful morning from Oklahoma. As I mentioned I do play at retirement communities, nursing homes, senior facilities. Obviously not doing that now. Although I did go to Cuyahoga Falls, uh, a facility called Maplewood Assisted Living and this was about three weeks ago and the weather was very lovely and I went window to window outside of the facility and all the residents opened their windows. They could only open about three inches, but that's all I needed to get some sound right from me through the screen to the residents. And it was very gratifying because even though I couldn't go in and play to them without this barrier, it was still very gratifying and I know they enjoyed it. Um, and it's, it was just a different way to bring it to them, but that's okay. We have to find new and creative ways to bring music to people. Um, I love to play, for instance, we have the Kentucky Derby coming up in May. And if I were to go into a facility of seniors, um, I might play something like this. Which, of course, is the call, the, uh, the main call to get the event started. But then I can also add maybe my old Kentucky home. Stephen Foster song. Cato. That's when we pluck the string. Spring song. Pizzicato, that literally means plucking the string, and we're called on to do that quite a bit in orchestra playing, not as much in the solo playing. But if you want the effect, or even dueling banjos, for a few moments. You know, the violin is the diva. She's the diva of the stringed instruments. She doesn't like being a banjo, but that's okay. I'm just trying to show you all the different varieties of sound you can get. Sometimes we play music that requires a very glassy sound, an ethereal sound. It's called Ponticello.
gives a very eerie effect and a different effect. It's very airy and it just sounds glassy to me. And it's called Ponticello because this is the bridge and you're playing very close to the bridge when you do that effect. And that gives that glassy, shimmery, shimmery sound. Um, another effect, there's actually many, but we do something called tremolo. Sometimes you'll see violinists madly. That's just to produce more sound. It's, we call it the Hollywood ending because it gives a big flourish to the sound. So sometimes you'll see violinists doing that. That's called tremolo, tremolo because it's a trembling kind of motion. Um, I want to show you the bow real quickly. The bow is so very important. Um, and bows can be a million dollars. There's a French bow called a tort that's worth a small fortune. And when you take the bow apart, this is what it looks like. Because this indeed is from the tail of a horse. And not a Cleveland Metro Park horse either. This horse comes from Siberia where the weather is very cold, temperature drops, horses need to be warm. They adapt and they grow very, very thick hair. And they cut these, uh, these horses' hairs and they send them to the United States in what we call skeins. And the horses are from Siberia or Mongolia, where of course the weather is cold and we end up getting wonderful hair. You couldn't use a human hair because it would just slide over. But this hair has a good grip on it. Inside each hair, there's many, many little quills. And the quills actually grab the string as we play. And the bow is made out of a very interesting type of wood called Pernambuco wood. It comes from the Amazon, but it's not being harvested anymore. So it's considered an endangered wood, like ebony. And down here we have Speaking of, we have ebony and sterling silver, mother of pearl. Bows are very, can be very elaborate. I've seen them with ivory and gold, and they're very important, and they can be extremely as much as valuable as the instrument itself. Um, the violin is made of curly maple on the back. It's got to be a hard wood because the top has to act like the top of a drum. It has to be a soft wood. Usually it's spruce. And that's because the hardwood is durable. Sound will go in, bounce off of it. The softer wood allows the vibrations to come out to you. These are called F holes. They're shaped like the letter F. This is pine. The little bridge is pine. Often these entire fingerboards are ebony. Uh, not in this case. This is rosewood. And these are the pegs, which are also rosewood. And the strings are not catgut. They never have been catgut. They were sheep intestine for a while, but those don't hold up. And they would pop and break. Now our strings are made of purlon, which is a nylon material that is uh, durable. And it won't pop off during a concert. It's the same material that mountain climbers use. So you know it's strong. Okay, I want to continue playing, of course, but I wanted to give you some info about, about the instrument. Um, so many beautiful songs. I, I happen to love the, the music of uh, George Gershwin. So I'm going to do a little um, three-part uh, medley of his music, starting with Someone to Watch Over Me. <laughs>
love is here to stay. Next one is a song about something that's hopefully coming soon, summertime. Ponticello in a pizzicato. We called it a stinger. It's the last note. Um, so that was a few songs by George Gershwin. I also love Rodgers and Hammerstein, Andrew Lloyd Webber. I was due to play as one of 22 string players at Playhouse Square last month for the wonderful production Jesus Christ Superstar, but the virus had other plans, so that did not happen. I've played Phantom of the Opera many times. I love those tunes. Um, I love Memory from Cats. I think I'll do a little Memory from Cats for you. Again, Andrew Lloyd Webber.
So there's a little Andrew Lloyd Webber memory from Cats. As I mentioned before, I love Rodgers and Hammerstein. Here's a little sound of music. few songs from Sound of Music. I think I get requests for Edelweiss more often than any other song, except maybe Devil Went Down to Georgia, um, Charlie Daniels, fiddle music. I think I have to do it now. Here we go. <laughs> following Edelweiss. I don't think that's ever happened <laughs> in the history of music or performances as Charlie Daniels' devil went down to Georgia come after Edelweiss, but first time for everything, right? <laughs> so I also love themes. When I go to Alzheimer's units, it's miraculous. Maybe many of you know already what music does for, for those of us not uh, afflicted with memory issues. Those who are afflicted with memory issues seem to have a circuitry up here <laughs> that hones in on music better than anybody. There's some pathway in our brains that retains music. No one quite knows why. Um, I see it all the time. I will go into a nursing home with an Alzheimer's facility. I go in, maybe there's 10 or 12 folks gathered around watching television. And we turn the television off 
and I get in the middle of this group and I start playing songs that are themes, parts of themes. For instance, since we're coming up on spring and flowers are blooming, I might do my flower theme, uh, a song called Daisy. everybody will say Daisy. So I move on. And of course that's the yellow rose of Texas. And folks will know that. Then I really take it out there and I play this. That's tiptoeing through, tiptoe through the tulips. Folks will know that, and then we'll maybe talk a little bit about Tiny Tim, who made it so popular. Um, another theme I love is uh, moon themes. Whenever there's an eclipse, or a few weeks ago there was a pink moon, anytime the moon is um, featured in the sky, I like to play off that with some moon songs. Everything from Moon Dance, Van Morrison. <laughs> Moon River. Oh, there's Moon over Miami. Moon over Parma, I think. Fly Me to the Moon. You're probably saying and thinking many other moon songs. They're all they're all very cool. I love Fly Me to the Moon. Frank Sinatra made this very popular. <laughs>
from Breakfast at Tiffany's with Audrey Hepburn, I do believe. Beautiful song by Henry Mancini, Moon River. So as you see, there's themes, there's Irish music. I love the Celtic music. I play at a, uh, a large Irish Catholic church every St. Patty's Day. Didn't happen this year, but it's a huge event. There's bagpipes, fifes, drums. And at one point, I come up and do a Danny Boy. Um, it's quite a, a moving uh, event to witness because I think half of County Mayo and Ca County Cork are here in Cleveland. And it's so much fun to, to play these tunes. And I'll just do a little bit of uh, a Danny Boy for you. Woman. Um, there's the three Irish uh, singers on television you might have seen, the women. They're just beautiful, and the one flies around with her violin, and she's amazing. Um, and I watch them, and I just think, wow, they have really taken these beautiful Celtic melodies and, and just put them on television, made a show with them, and made everyone just in, so endeared to them even more. Uh, Italian music is beautiful. Little Vivaldi, Spring. As you see, in that particular selection, I was using a lot of fast little motions. And those are called trills. T-R-I-L-L-S. -L -L trills. And they are supposed to, in this piece, represent birds. So, it's one thing, but you bring a whole different flavor in when you introduce those birds. It just makes it what we call in music programmatic. In other words, what we play is indicative of something that exists. Bird calls, for instance. In the four seasons of Vivaldi, which this is a uh, part of, in the winter, there's a winter movement that actually mimics someone falling on the ice. It's something like something like that. So that's supposed to be falling right down. And there's even a dog barking in the autumn season. And there's a lot of swirling leaves depicted by the music. So Vivaldi was way ahead of his time. He, he was using amazing techniques in his music. Uh, I love opera. I was part of the Cleveland Opera for years. We did Puccini and Verdi and Bizet and these wonderful composers. Some of you might um, not know the um, this is, this is called, this is from a novel called Janiskiki, O mio babino caro, my dear father.
And in the year 2000, I played for the three tenors, Caras, Pavarotti, and Domingo, Placido Domingo. And it was a thrill. It was at Brown Stadium in June. It was very hot. But boy, Pavarotti sang his heart out. It was in the year 2000. Seems like yesterday. And he sang the famous... Beautiful operatic piece for singers, but I stole it and put, played it on the violin for you. Um, some Italian music was written for the, mu the movies. In other words, movies like The Godfather needed some really typical Italian music, what we call typical Italian music, with beautiful melodies and lush harmonies. And I think... Um, a composer, his name is Roto, R-O-T-O. He composed beautiful music. The main theme is usually played on the trumpet. some French music, Edith Piaf, La Vie en Rose, some Debussy, some Ravel, but alas, time is limited. I, um, I've covered a lot of eras. I hope you've enjoyed them. I think I will play maybe two more selections. Some of you may have watched Ken Burns' um, documentary about the Civil War, and throughout that wonderful documentary was a tune that was actually written in the 80s, early 80s, by Jay Unger. And the song could easily have been written in the 1800s. That's the kind of flavor the song has. It's called Ashokan Farewell. I will play that, and then I'm going to end with a chardash, a Hungarian dance. Here's a little bit of Ashokan Farewell, followed by the 
the uh, Hungarian dance number five by Brahms. Here we go. Mary Beth Ions, 
I'm coming to you from my home in Rocky River, Ohio, and it's been a joy to be with you in this way, which is different, but maybe it's all okay because we're still connecting and music is the great connector. And um, love you all and hope to see you again soon.